You'd have to admit that this is one sick looking view from your everyday FPV drone. After all, usually we do not really see how your drone looks like from the third person perspective. Here's a quick tutorial on how to do it yourself, so hopefully you will not repeat some of the mistakes I made. Because I made a few and the first flight looked like this. How to do it? Well, you will need a drone and a camera. I discovered that, well, although the drones itself can be whatever you want, the camera has to be really light. You will be putting a lot of weight on the rod sticking outside of your camera, and if the camera is just too heavy, it will introduce so much moment of inertia that the drone will either not fly or will be a vibrator. Yes, a vibrator. The first version I made was based on the two 6mm carbon rods. Probably I would get much better result with the 10mm or 12mm carbon pipe, but I had none, so I decided, okay, two thicker rods combined together will be stiff enough. Unfortunately, they were not stiff enough. As a result, the whole camera setup was vibrating so much that the vibrations were fed to the gyro, to the flight controller, to the motors, and it even not worked wanted to go down. I was not able to control altitude at all. This arm in flight was the only possibility to bring the drone down. The problem was that the two rods were side by side and this meant that yes, the whole setup was stiff on the roll axis but was absolutely not stiff on the pitch axis and was acting as a huge spring. As a result, I added a third carbon rod below two others to stiffen up the whole setup. And this helped a lot, but not as much as I wanted. I was able to fly, but the footage was kinda shaky, because the second mistake I made, even though the extension rod was kinda stiff, was still too long. It turned out that the maximum practical length of the extension rod was only about 15 centimeters. Anything longer than that was just acting as the spring in flight. And of course, I had to adjust the field and the pit setup on the flight controller. This quad usually flights with the gyro filtering at around 110 Hz. To have this thing hanging from the back, I had to lower the gyro LPF to around 70 Hz to try to filter out some of the vibrations that were still fed to the gyro, and also I had to seriously lower the P and D gains on the PID controller. I just cut everything in half, and only then I was able to have the stable flight without too much of the vibrations. But guess what? It was still not enough. The final change I had to make to this setup is to put a brand new fresh set of propellers. Only then the amount of the vibrations generated by the propellers and then fed to the spring, the rod in the back were low enough so everything was not just vibrating too much in the flight. But you do have to agree this looks sick. I think if I would put even thicker carbon rod in the back, the effect would be better. But I have different things to play with, so this will just have to be enough. Here's the step-by-step -step tutorial. Design and print the extension rod with the holder for your camera. I'm using the Cadix Peanut, which is light, has good stabilization, it is fine. Step two, don't make the rod too long or too thin. It has to have enough of the volume to be able to be stiff enough not to generate too much of the vibrations and not to be too loose of a spring. Then lower the cutoff frequencies on your filter, lower the P gains on pitch, lower the D gains or pitch. You do not rather have to touch the I gains at all and fly. And here's the next video you should watch.